Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new video. Now this video is going to be a bit out of the norm for my channel and there's a couple reasons why. The biggest one that you're going to notice is this is a more political video and sadly that has to be the case when we're discussing things like wokeness in a video game which is such an embarrassingly silly thing to say but when we're discussing wokeness uh period but especially in video games we kind of have to dive into the realm of politics so if you're not into that i completely understand and you should click off now another reason this video is going to be a bit different is because it's a long form reaction as opposed to my longer-ish form essays and that is also likely to turn off a few viewers which is completely understandable that all being said before we get into this video i want to make sure that it's clear that i don't want anyone to send a hate towards the creator of the original video and i i don't support witch hunting these are my opinions and my opinions alone and Lastly, this video does have spoilers for Marvel Spider-Man 2 made by Insomniac, which if you haven't played, I encourage you to the utmost degree to play it. This game is amazing, and in my opinion, is better than the first game in almost every single way, and is definitely worth your money. So with that all being said, uh, let's just hop right into the video. A block slash parry button which really is probably the greatest source of my complaints with this game because the muscle memory is so beaten into me from playing all these Arkham style games to press one button to dodge attacks. So I decided to cut out certain parts of the opening. Uh, one of the big ones is he says that God of War Ragnarok, which is a game that I absolutely love and hold in high regard, in my opinion, it's a solid 9 out of 10. But he says that while God of War Ragnarok was woke, Spider-Man 2 is more woke. And what he means by woke in a sense with Ragnarok is Freya is really strong and he thinks that she was able to beat Kratos in Ragnarok. And he doesn't exactly remember the fact that she was the leader of the Valkyrie and he doesn't comprehend the fact that Kratos wasn't trying to beat her, he was trying to defend against her and he was okay with her killing him. Now the, the big issue here is that a lot of the quote unquote wokeness that we see in Ragnarok is accurate to the source material, to North, Norse mythology. Spider-Man has always been an inherently left-leaning character, and so are a lot of superheroes like The Flash or Superman. And the reason is, one of the big things that the left fights for is progressive rights, such as gay marriage, interracial dating, trans rights, the ability to live as a trans person without being ridiculed, by your peers and spider-man especially spider-man always has stood to stand up for the little guy and make anyone feel like they could be the one behind the mask oh, one of the greatest things about spider-man's outfit what he is completely covered so any kid could imagine he's spider-man because no color of the skin shows he could be black under that he could be red he could be yellow he could belong to any race and that True. wasn't done purposely it was done accidentally but i think it was the best thing we did making him so that he could be anybody under that costume it's hard to say that spider-man is not a quote unquote woke assuming that woke just means accepting of different groups of people now onto this exact point that he's talking about now the gameplay his complaint as you can tell uh just boils down to the fact that he's bad at the game he's grown accustomed to other games making him just press triangle slash y in order to do a dodge uh, a counter attack the thing is in spider-man 2 if you've played you will know there's two buttons the circle to jump out of the way and left bumper to uh, counter the attack it's not all that complex it's difficult because of how late the color flashes but go into the and I'm sure he would be upset at me suggesting this but the accessibility tab actually allows you to increase the window you have to use the dot the parry mechanic and if I can I'll put that on screen now that being said he's admitting to being bad at the game while just a few minutes prior saying that the game is 
brain dead easy so these are the kinds of criticisms we're going to see as we get further into the video so buckle your seat belts now the thing that I absolutely despise that you could probably guess is that Yuri the cop from the first game who works with spider-man throughout the game has now become a vigilante akin to the Punisher. She's a mall ninja dressed in purple with a fucking chain sickle. She had a gun as a cop and is now downgraded to a fucking chain sickle and swings around kind of like Spider-Man. And it's implied that she kills people, though we never see her actually killing anybody. And there's multiple things that are cringe about this character. First of all, she acts like a try-hard edgelord. Another case of a strong female character basically just embodying toxic masculinity traits. So, <laughs> calling Wraith the female dark edgy embodiment of toxic masculinity is very silly because nothing she does other than fighting is traditionally quote-unquote masculine as for her just being some woke propaganda to pander to the leftist audience because they hate police i would like to bring it to your attention that wraith the yuri watanabe version was introduced in july of 2009 when cops were very popular with shows like cops and life pd that being said i'm led to believe that you just don't like her because you don't like women or women in a strong role you have an issue with freya a actual god in the god of war universe being a strong and quote-unquote independent woman which by the way that's how she was written in norse mythology but you have an issue with her being a strong woman you have an issue with mary jane being a strong woman and you have an issue with yuri watanabe no longer being a police officer and being a strong woman and for those of you who haven't played the DLC, this isn't some brand new out of left field thing. This was introduced in the DLC of Spider-Man 1. Yuri Watanabe had an operation to attack Hammerhead. In this operation, there was a police officer and it was his birthday. His child gave him a watch with Spider-Man on it. And she says that he's good to wear even though it's against protocol. Hammerhead kills this guy, and in that moment, she makes the decision for herself that being a cop isn't enough. She needs to go above and beyond like Spider-Man does, except Spider-Man isn't effective because he just puts them in jail like he has with Hammerhead. She needs to kill the bad guys, that way they are never going to re-offend again. So she's not this brand new woke character made because people hate cops now. She's a character that's been around since 2009. And though she doesn't use sickles from what I'm aware, she's still a character from the comics. So this is an incredibly goofy argument to make. Oh my god, this game is so woke. Wraith is in it and she's an edgy woman. Black Suit Spider-Man in the 90s was an edgy character. Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man when he has the symbiote. Particularly Peter Parker is edgy so much so that his hair is darker and he wears it over his eyes like he's an emo. So to act like being edgy is against the Spider-Man formula is just downright goofy and a lie. And it's implied that a normal human with no powers, no real training, at least it's not shown on screen where training is, is a match for Spider-Man because she has her own two-phase boss fight most of the way through the quest line. You got punched 10,000 times, she's completely fine. Are you fucking joking? Is gameplay canon? Okay? Is gameplay canon in modern games? I, I really have to wonder. In the Superior Spider-Man comics, when Otto Octavius is first put into Peter's body, he's able to punch Scorpion's jaw clean off of his face because he's not holding back. Not only does Peter usually hold back when he fights the bad guys, he holds back extra when he's fighting people he has a personal connection with, like Otto Octavius, or in this case, Yuri Watanabe. To complain that she doesn't get knocked out 
instantly is such an intensely stupid complaint to have this person saw the mysterio boss fight in the original spider-man 2 or he saw the executioner boss fight in batman arkham origins and was like this is how the spider-man boss fights should be not because they are simply silly but because Spider-Man is strong and so because he's so strong every boss fight should just be one hit punch because by that same argument Peter should have been able to one hit shot Electro, Vulture, Mr. Negative, Otto Octavius, Scorpion and maybe Rhino but he's not he's holding back every single time he fights someone and especially in this case he's holding back extra while he fights Yoi Watanabe this is basic spider-man lore that basically any super spider fan or even regular spider fan would know which he claims to be later in the video as he m cites things from the comics multiple times so I don't know why he's acting like this is shocking and yes Gameplay is canon in the game, but not 100%. Spider-Man probably didn't have a 5-8 to eight minute long fight with Yoi Watanabe. It was probably like 3-5 to five minutes. However, gameplay is still canon to the game. It's not a secret by any stretch of the imagination. And this game's full of shitty mini-games, by the way. They're just straight up padding. They add nothing. They require no brain power. Though I say that, funny enough, I did get stumped by an incredibly easy one at one point. Through this stupid superhero app, instead of Spider-Man solving real problems like supervillains robbing banks or killing people, he decides to help randos who have some kind of trivial issue they could easily solve themselves. Good morning, New Yorkers. Looking for another beautiful day here in the city. New clouds to start us off. The steady increase in sightings of Spider-Man has sparked a national debate over the role of vigilantism in American crime fighting. How about that Spider-Man? Last night on the Manhattan Bridge, he saved a dozen lives. We want to hear your calls. I think without Spider-Man, there'd be no hope for this thing. Well, who do you think pays the bills for all the damages he causes, huh? It's you and me, tax Did you make this? Yeah. This is a wind turbine. You make this? No way. This is amazing. It's good as new, right? I'll walk you home. What's your name? Jorge. Jorge? Um, I'm Spider-Man. For example, you help some black woman find her grandpa who's gotten lost in Central Park or something. Of course, at the end of this quest line, you find the grandpa, he talks about his wife, and that's it. That's the whole point of the quest, is to listen to some old man reminisce about his wife when he was younger. There's another quest where you help some old black guy free his pigeons because he's about to die and so they need to find a new home. And all you do is just swing around the city with pigeons flying around you while a copyrighted song plays. That's the whole fucking mission. And oh, big shock, he's dead when you come back. Ooh, how sad. There's an I find it very weird to feel it necessary to point out these characters' skin color. He points out that Haley's black. He points out that Genki's Asian and fat. He points out that the blind girl side mission is black. He points out that Howard is black. He points out that that girl and her grandpa are black. And it's weird because he doesn't point out the skin color of any other character. He doesn't point out that Peter's white. He doesn't point out that MJ's white. He just calls MJ the T slur later in the video, which is also very strange of him to do. That being set aside and focusing on the actual criticism he's levying, which isn't a criticism, and if it is, it boils down to I don't like being your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, I want to be an Avengers level Spider-Man that deals with Avengers level threats, which isn't Spider-Man, and while we like to dunk on the MCU Spider-Man movies, I think Tom Holland's Spider-Man said it best. Don't pretend you thought this through. No, I, I know you did. You I did could think not this have possibly thought this You can't through. be a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man if there's no neighborhood. Spider-Man helps the little guy, and he always has existed to help the little guy and make everyone feel like they could help the little guy. Because Spider-Man is a human superhero. He is, in every sense of the word, a superhuman. And my experience with the Howard mission, although mine and mine alone, was an incredibly emotional experience that 
had its ups and downs and even caused me to tear up at the end, just like the end of the grandpa side mission, it is still one of if not my favorite side missions in the entire game. Howard isn't just this random nobody, this black homeless guy, he's someone that we helped in Spider-Man 1. We come to know to learn that Howard's wife has been dead for years and he's used the pigeons to help himself stay in an almost good mood and to keep himself occupied with other beings. We in this mission get a sense that he's going to pass soon and this mission is us helping him grant his final wish one of the only things we hear while we're going to drop the pigeons off is not many folks have been kind to me in my life anytime howard and you can still visit them take the train out the music is amazing the writing is amazing and i don't see how you can a not find it a good emotional scene but b find it a good level at all it's such a weird criticism Another side quest where you help some blind woman because apparently there's a monster in her yard. It turns out it's one of these robotic panther enemies and Genki reprograms it to be a dog, a heckin' pupperino, and you train it by shooting webs at shit in the environment. And of course you give the robot dog to the lady, which has a fucking rainbow painted on it for some fucking reason. This whole game's like that. That's just the tip of the iceberg for that shit. I hate to be that guy, but that's such a weird criticism. My boyfriend pointed out while I was playing the game that there's actually a cup with Jesus on her uh, table right next to her. So if rainbows are bad, he should at least be willing to point out and maybe even praise the game for having Jesus in the game. I mean, Jesus is amazing and gay bad which by the way why does he only point out that there is a rainbow there's also flowers that also just appeared out of nowhere and bumblebees and grass the whole fucking art on the dog just like just randomly appeared so where's the criticism for that it doesn't exist because this guy is blatantly homophobic he doesn't he doesn't like gay people i have reason to believe because of comments later in the game that he doesn't like trans people he most definitely doesn't like black people and because of comments he makes later in the video i, do, I believe he doesn't like women he just fucking hates minorities it's insane oh but it gets worse it gets much much worse there's another mission where you go to miles private school and help some zoomer mutt who I couldn't even tell was a woman until I looked closely, take pictures around the school, including of their fucking eSports club. When someone makes a comment like that, it makes me wonder if they're actually neurologically disabled. Because if he's been to any school ever, he recognizes that the photography groups tend to take photographs of the things that happen in schools. And if an esports club is one of the big things in the school, it's gonna get a fucking photograph for it. He fails to mention that they also photograph the sports team. That's pretty regular. Weird thing to bring up. Also, really weird to call Odyssey a Zoomer Mutt. Who he I couldn't even tell was a woman until I looked closely. That also feels like blatant transphobia because Odyssey is a non-binary individual and it's not even brought up in your face because they don't use pronouns for Odyssey at all in the game. So he can't say that it's woke pandering because it's not in your face. Where you help a gay kid ask this dude out to homecoming. Spider-Man is wasting his fucking time helping some gay kid ask out another gay kid. Are you fucking kidding me? What the hell, man? This is what I'm talking about. This is how you know it's propaganda. They're shoving it down your fucking throat. And no, it being an optional side quest is not an excuse, especially since you had no way of knowing what you would see what this quest contained unless you read it on the internet. So this is what I mean by this YouTuber is unapologetically homophobic. I have no doubt in my mind that if you were helping a white guy ask a white girl to homecoming, he wouldn't have a problem with it and he'd think it's a cute mission. No doubt in my mind. However, that's not the case. You're helping a, I believe, Latino male ask another Latino male to homecoming, and that's gay. However, and I'm not going to get into the science of it because you can do that in your own time, Homosexuality is not exclusive to humans. Homosexuality can be found in almost every other mammal in the world. 
this mission isn't propaganda because it's a side mission and he says you can't use that as an argument because i had to watch it press the abandoned mission button buddy you won't go in for the hundred percent i don't want to see how you react when miles gets a puerto rican suit oh dear they're showing his culture and his suit more what a terrible reality we live in there's a side quest where you play as Miles' deaf girlfriend walking around spraying graffiti on walls. No, I actually don't have all that much to say about this mission. I found it pretty fun, and I found it very cute. However, I can see why people might not enjoy it. It's very separated, almost, it feels like. However, the reason I'm talking about this is because the way he says it and the emotion he speaks with makes it sound like he hates the fact that he's playing as a deaf black girl, which, based off of the way he's looking in that corner, the way he laughs and at one point makes fun of the ASL narrator who's actually deaf. Black history and black futurism. <laughs> the girl pink reflects better in person. Yeah. Black futurism. I want my futurism. What kind of forever? But I hypothesize that's exactly what it is. He's just racist. And that's not good but it would be way better if he just admitted that he fucking hates black people just say say what you're thinking man you saw her on screen you wanted to say the n-word uh, i so that's it on to the next part this is actually part of the main story but you meet a scientist chick who has the non-binary flag and the monkey pox flag on her desk there's a pawn shop with the Ukraine flag on the inside, which this is the fucking comic books. See, the issue here is that, for, ignoring the fact that he said chick immediately before saying that the person is non-binary, that's not woke, all right? That's not propaganda, because it's not in your face, all right? It's not even subtle propaganda. It's just identifiers to who they are as a person gives you a little bit of insight saying monkeypox flag is unironically blatantly homophobic i would take it as a joke because those are the kinds of jokes i make if not for the fact that he uses slurs this is a very clear situation of someone trying to disguise their bigotry as comedy i find bigoted comedy funny but when the person unironically believes in the things they're saying it loses any sense of humor. As for the uh, Ukraine flag, that's such a non-issue. I have played through the game a handful of times, and I didn't even notice it. Also, Marvel Comics has always been one to talk about real-world wars. What are you talking about? Captain America, World War II. Thor, he fought alongside Joseph Stalin in earlier comics. You're insane if you think that this is a brand new woke issue. But... I wouldn't put it past him to think that because he seems to willfully ignore things in comics that disagree with what he's saying. Meanwhile, he likes to bring up things in comics that directly support what he's saying. Why does he have so many badass hunters that are full of women and people of color? I mean, this is the most diverse group of villains I've ever seen in any video game. Now, I'll give him this one. Unlike Brooklyn, which has a majorly non-white population volgrad russia is mostly white russians with some ukrainians and uh, a mix of some others but for the most part volgrad russia is white well skin color white however i think it's very silly and once again i believe he is just racist that he has an issue that there are black women here he feels it necessary to point out that there are women and that they are black when i was playing through the game i did not once go oh shit these guys are black or oh dear these guys are white and that's because i'm not a weirdo like these guys however i understand that anyone who disagrees with me is gonna go well that's because you're brainwashed by the by the by the liberals and you're falling into the system buddy so I can't really make much of an argument because any argument I give will just be combated with, nope, you're brainwashed. Spider-Man comes across some gun goons who are the least diverse enemy group in the game. They are not only mostly white, but they are pretty much all men and they're jacked, which just made me like them more and want to be part of their club. Huh? Huh? Uh, that is a man, dude. Look at that body. Wide shoulders, no hips, flat ass. That is a man.
And now in a fucking superhero game, we spend the next five minutes cleaning up a house. And we get a flashback to when Peter was a teenager and he punched a hole in his wall and Aunt May helped him. Don't care, Aunt May had it coming. There's a walking simulator mission where you ride bikes. Are we gonna really have a bike riding mission? Just make it a cutscene, please. No, dude, don't make me- don't do it. Don't make me ride my bike in a straight line. It better be a cutscene. Fuck you! Fuck you! Now, I'm sure you don't need me to tell you, but a very big part of what makes Spider-Man so many people's favorite superhero, including my own, is the fact that we're not just focused on the spider part of it. A lot of people love the man part of it. See, Spider-Man 2 is often viewed as the best Spider-Man movie, and a big part of that is because it focuses on how being Spider-Man affects Peter Parker. You can't have a Spider-Man story without trying to delve into the life of Peter Parker. They use these scenes to A. Build a relationship between the player and MJ, as well as the player and Harry, an emotional connection between those characters, but also show how being Spider-Man is affecting Peter's life. Because of being Spider-Man, he can't take care of basic work around the house, and he can't start working on paying off May's mortgage. Also, saying the scene between Peter and Aunt May about balance being a process, not a destination, saying that scene is bad is an absolute schizo take, and I cannot believe that this guy can call himself a spider-man fan while also hating on everything that makes spider-man human now the game decides to waste the next 30 minutes building up peter and harry osborne's friendship as we saw in the beginning they're not even pretending to make it a twist that he's venom in this game they pretty much gave it away goofy as hell to say that the game wastes the next 30 minutes to develop a relationship. That's such a goofy and retarded opinion and just in general, bad take. There is some good criticism you can make about the game, like MJ being overpowered or a point he makes later in the video, MJ being a self insert. You can even say that the game is poorly paced or that the third act is way too rushed. All of those are decent to good criticisms, but criticizing the game for allowing you to build an emotional connection to a character is not a valid criticism. And I don't think many intelligent people will argue saying that it is an intelligent criticism. That being said, I don't think that the game could accurately build up the relationship between the two if it was a cutscene. It could not build the relationship as well as it does by being gameplay. On top of that, saying that the game is bad for making it obvious that Harry is the bad guy is such a goober take. I don't think many intelligent Spider-Man fans or just fans of media in general will say that the bad guy in Spider-Man 1 was bad. And the game also didn't try and hide it. The scene in which you meet Otto is almost a direct parallel to what he looks like with the arms on. The first scene in which you see Harry in this game has him being given the symbiote and being put into the tank with the symbiote on. So it's not like this is some super big mistake. It's very intentional and very consistent. If I remember correctly, they even do the same thing with Finn in Miles Morales, although that game is, in my opinion, substantially worse plot wise. And I might as well bring this up now, but this game has some god awful dialogue. I mean, ripped straight from Reddit. Paparazzi's bad enough. The paparazzi with guns? Oh my god, not paparazzi with guns! Epic. An impromptu shot of ponage in action. I'm not a gamer. No takers. Just me. Okay, well, you know, you, you come to me for the real real, so I'm just trying to deliver. I'm like a V real estate agent. A real estate agent. Okay. You sound peachy. I'm peachy. Just peachy. I'm very Reddit chungus right now. I can actually agree that the dialogue in these clips that he's shown is goofy. However, he's retarded. Like, undeniably. First off, 
high schoolers tend to use really silly lingo. Be a human who interacts with the real world and real world high schoolers and you will see firsthand that we have words like riz, uh, gat, skibbity toilet. I mean, it's all so goofy. Hey, Jax Films, can you please say something using Gen Z slang? Totally. Bam. <laughs> Let me drop some lit Gen Z slang for you. No, yeah. no. This content is fire. It's straight flexing with the epic vibes. I'm shooketh by the level of awesomeness. <laughs> no cap. It's on fleek. It gives me all the feels. No. Keep slaying and stay woke. My squad. Damn. That was some cool Gen Z slang. You're so hip with the youth. I just lost 10 years of my life. I can actually agree that the dialogue in these clips that he's shown is goofy. However, he's retarded. Like, undeniably. First off, high schoolers tend to use really silly lingo. Be a human who interacts with the real world and real world high schoolers, and you will see firsthand that we have words like riz, uh, gat, skibbity toilet. I mean... It's all so goofy. So to act like Odyssey is a unique loser and the game has bad writing because they say ponage in action is an incoherent argument almost. And saying that Miles is goofy and has bad or poorly written dialogue because he says paparazzi is bad enough, but paparazzi with guns? You've actually just never read a comic book or interacted with a piece of medium that has Spider-Man in it. Spider-Man is well known as well for being a relatable character. He's well known for his dog shit quips. Even he's aware that they're dog shit. I believe he's had a conversation in the comics with both Deadpool as well as Wolverine, although I'm sure he's had conversations with many more people, that the reason he makes such bad jokes, is to basically mess with the head of whoever he's fighting, make them feel like he doesn't take this seriously, and as such kind of throw them off of their game. Once again, if you interacted with any Spider-Man medium, except maybe the Toby movies, because Toby doesn't quip that much, which, eh, that actually makes sense. He seems like he's only seen the Toby movies and then immediately stopped because having anything sort of modern is woke. But if you've interacted with any Spider-Man medium other than the Toby movies, you'd know that he quips. And not even that, in the Toby movies he makes a fucking joke, and it's one of the worst we've seen! What is he talking about? What about my generous proposal? Are you in, or are you out? It's you who's out, Gobby. Out of your mind. Wrong answer! How many gay jokes are in this fucking game? I shall be your first. Oh my! Oh, okay. They're doing it on purpose now. What do you, What do you, What do you mean you pre-ordered the the game? Don't they, they're, they're just gonna give you one? I'm like, well, you know, sometimes they do, but I don't like to count on it. And I I definitely don't want to miss out on 19 inches of venom, you know. <laughs> so on our next mission are two Spider Men, and yes, they call each other Spider Man. Gee, I'm sure that wouldn't be confusing at all to the public, especially when one sounds black. It's not that complex. It's either, have you seen that new Spider-Man? Or, have you seen that old Spider-Man? It's really not that hard to discern the two. And also, it's been one of the community's greatest problems throughout every medium when they try and change Miles Morales' spider name. He said Spider-Kid and spider Bite, and I know there's more, but those are the only ones coming to mind. And every time it's like, dude, just call him Spider-Man because that's who he is. His design is straight ripped from the comics, it looks great. Craven was certainly one of the only good characters in this game, even if I don't really like the idea of him having a thousand minions. I mean, where's the sport in hunting this ultimate prey if you have an entire army capturing them for you to fight them in single combat? Isn't part of hunting tracking them down yourself? Like the fires. And you would think with Miles Morales being Peter Parker's student, 
protege, apprentice, whatever you want to call it, that maybe Peter would help him forgive Martin Lee, or maybe at least resist the urge to kill him. Nope. Miles does this all on his own. In fact, Miles takes care of all of his problems on his own, but not just his, but also Peter's problems. I also don't really like the fact that Miles Morales is able to take care of his own problems. I don't see why any Spider-Man should ever be able to deal with their own problems. It just really doesn't make all that much sense. Spider-Man isn't a character founded off of the ideas of, even through hardships, doing what you have to do and dealing with your own problems, as well as trying to help other people deal with theirs. All sarcasm aside, that's such a weird complaint. Peter deals with all of his problems, why can't the other Spider-Man? And as for Miles helping Peter with his own problems, they explain decently well why he's able to do that. And it's very simple. Through the last two-ish years, Peter's lost his motherly figure, his mentor and overall inspiration, and through this game, loses his best friend as well as almost himself to the symbiote. So, Peter is in such a shitty mental space that he simply isn't able to handle everything. So, of course, Miles is going to help him because Miles is in a good mental space. He just got a girlfriend. He's doing well in school. He's able to finish his essay. So, of course, he's going to try and do the right thing and help people because that's what Spider-Man does. Though something I've noticed that this game series has in common with the MCU is they have no problem with killing off villains. Apparently, Shocker, Electro, and Vulture all get killed off screen in this game. So by the time this game is over, half of Spider-Man's rogues gallery are either dead or reformed. Because yes, there's multiple reformed villains too in this. And I know some people are going to disagree with me on this, but I really think it's a waste of potential to just kill off almost every villain after their first appearance. Especially since, even though Spider-Man has one of the greatest groups of villains of any Marvel character, it's still only so deep. I don't think Green Goblin's going to be enough to carry the third game, but I guess that's a problem for five years down the line at this rate. Now, the reason I left the majority of that clip in is because I wanted to give him a chance to express all of his opinion. And while I agree to an extent that the games kill off a large amount, they only kill off slash redeem half of the introduced rogues gallery. They haven't killed off Green Goblin, Venom, Dark Ark, Craven is dead, don't get me wrong, but there's also his wife or other people in the Hunters. They haven't introduced Calypso yet. There's a female Doc Ock in the comics. There's the Jackal. John Jameson is a bad guy for a period of time. They've introduced Carnage. Rhino is still alive. There's so many villains. There's at least 50 bad guys, notable bad guys, mind you, that still exist in Spider-Man's rogues gallery that either haven't been introduced yet or are still alive, period. So... No, it's just Black Cat stealing a teleporting scroll, and you'll never guess why. Apparently now she's a lesbian, and she uses the scroll to teleport to Paris so she can get with her girlfriend. Are you fucking joking? And what adds insult to injury is Black Cat is one of the only vaguely attractive women in this entire game. There is no other explanation for this except that the writers hate Peter Parker, and they hate... Peter Parker's fans. No, God fucking damn it. Now I know that Black Cat likes women. I'm fucking losing it. Life isn't worth living anymore. I mean, God damn it. They made an attractive character. Not straight. Oh, God. Black Cat has been openly bisexual in the comics since, I believe, 2002. They don't hate fans. They don't hate Spider-Man. They clearly love him more than you do, seeing as they understand different things that have happened in the comics and have become a essential and canon part of people's character. You're whining because you don't think it's plausible to jerk your willy off to a, le uh, as you put it, quote-unquote, lesbian character. Once again, she's not. It is canonically factual that she has had sex with Spider-Man. The whole plot of the first DLC in Spider-Man was that her child was missing and Peter thought it was his. They fucked. So she's not a lesbian. She's bisexual. 
And I'm sure that's very hard for him to comprehend that the sexuality is not a binary. But like I said, Black Cat has been bisexual in the comics since, I believe, 2002. I'll put that on screen now. And what do they do in the games? They take that away from him by making her a fucking 50-year-old man-jawed tr- Like I said earlier, I'm perfectly okay with offensive humor. It's, to be honest, the main kind of humor that I'm drawn to. However, I don't think this is able to be passed off as just a joke. He's been very oddly racist and homophobic and transphobic the entire video. And so when he just straight up drops the T-slur, it's such a weird and off-putting situation. I mean, shit, in the 90s cartoon, which was for children, they made sure to make Black Cat hot as fuck. The video is linked in the description if you want to fact check me on this, but he goes on a rant for about five-ish minutes about just how upsetting it is that there's no super sexy characters in his superhero game. That is so weird. And the little cherry on top was an especially bad bit of dialogue that I had to hear four times because I kept dying during this part. Think they're here for the sea lion exhibit? Oh, I want to see that. Did you know sea lions can swim up to 25 miles per hour? I want to, I want to see the sea lion. Do you know yet? Sea lion, me, me, me. Are you fucking joking? What is the issue here? He's making a nerdy comment slash quip, which is incredibly in line for Spider-Man. After this, he goes on to complain that this version of Miles isn't as cool as the Spider-Verse version. So he doesn't want Black Cat to be bi like she is in the comics, but he does want Miles to be ultra cool like he is in the Spider-Verse movies. Um, okay. As someone who's actually been to multiple theme parks throughout his life, including one of the greatest roller coaster parks in the world, Cedar Point, you should actually go and do these things instead of trying to live vicariously through a video game. Trust me, it's worth it. So as usual, we have more schizophrenic rambling from this guy. Not a single person in the community has said, oh my god, this mission was so awesome because I've never gone to an amusement park. At least I was able to see what it's like through the game. No one said that. The mission isn't to let you live vicariously. So after saving Tombstone in the next mission, we kind of get to see just how ridiculous it is that he's a good guy now. I mean, he literally filed his teeth down into basically shark teeth. He's a giant fucking thug, and we're supposed to accept that, I don't know, he just had a change of heart off screen. This is such a non-argument in my opinion. Because Bob Ross, for example, was a bartender and then worked in the Air Force before he was a painter. You can have major career switches. There are people who have gone from being killers to helping the community in every way they can. A true humanitarian. So it really isn't a valid argument to say, well, Tombstone shouldn't have been able to change because he filed his teeth down. He's straight fucking. I do agree, however, that we should have seen him change. Last time you saw him in the game, he was the marketing department that we fought in Spider-Man 1. Suddenly, he's a good guy. And this seems to shock even Spider-Man, so it's not like it, Spider-Man had anything to do with it. It's just out of left field. So that alone is a good criticism. Like I said, not a good criticism to say he shouldn't have changed, period. Insomniac heard everyone's complaints about the Mary Jane missions in the first game, and instead of addressing criticism, like many modern egotistical developers, they decided to double down. Now, I know I shouldn't expect any form of intelligence out of this guy at this point. However, not addressing criticism would be leaving it exactly the way it was. The criticism was that it was an incredibly sudden break of pace. You didn't feel strong anymore. It was so slow. The Mary Jane stealth missions are no longer slow. They are no longer underpowered. You have the stun gun. At later points, you have web shooters. You have the trip mine, which I didn't even fucking use because the stun gun was so fun to play with. The developers didn't ignore criticism the developers saw it and said now we want to keep mj in our game these are important to us so what can we do to make them more enjoyable while still keeping them in the game and this is what they did the single taser to the neck 
knocks them out, when normally it takes like eight punches to knock out a basic enemy as Spider-Man who has super strength. Now this is the part where some nerd says, um, actually, he holds back against normal humans, otherwise he would kill them. Yeah, but he holds back so much that it takes eight punches versus one taser? Why doesn't he just have electric fists at this point? Oh, don't worry, I can answer that one for you. Uh, because the game would be fucking boring. What do you mean? Like I said earlier, Superior Spider-Man, so 616 Spider-Man, but with Otto in the body instead of Peter, was able to punch Scorpion's jaw clean off of his face because he was holding back significantly less than Peter does. So by this logic, Peter should be able to one-punch Scorpion in the Insomniac games, which I agree, he should be able to. However, do you think it would be an enjoyable boss fight in Spider-Man 1 if you could just one-punch uh, Scorpion? Or Martin Lee, as far as I'm aware, he doesn't have any extra durability powers. Peter should have been able to one-punch him. Do you think that would have been a fun boss fight? Kingpin, in the comics, 616 Peter is able to hold Kingpin by his skin after basically just kicking his ass for three minutes straight. Flawless victory! Do you think the Kingpin boss fight would have been fun if you just one-punched him? This is such a non-argument, man. And briefly, we get to play as Spider-Man again, only for them to take away control in just five minutes by having Peter get stabbed by Kraven. We don't even get a boss battle here, no. Insomniac thought it would be more interesting for him to get stabbed during a cutscene, and then we get this major fake out as if Peter Parker's gonna fucking die halfway through the story in a Spider-Man game. As if Peter's gonna die halfway through the story of a Spider-Man game. Bro, stop it. To adjust the actual point though, all jokes aside, I understand that a lot of people think it would have been enjoyable to have a one-on-one -on -one fight with Kraven where you use the red suit and get your ass kicked. That would have been super cool. However, I actually do agree with Insomniac's choice to make you wait until you have the black suit, and here's why. It makes Kraven look like a bigger threat. He kills half the Sinister Six and essentially kills Peter once, and then you have to wait to fight him. So it builds up, not just for the player, but especially for Symbiote Spider-Man, it builds up the want to fight him and kick his ass. So, like I said, I understand where the complaint comes from, but I don't think it was a stupid decision, quote-unquote. Instead, we get a very, very half-assed Bully Maguire sequence. Because the writers are giant cowards, most of the time Spider-Man isn't even an asshole, and it doesn't help that Yuri Lowenthal is a very bad one-note voice actor who has only managed to have such a prolific career despite his lack of any vocal range for purely nepotistic reasons, and no, I'm not gonna elaborate on that, you'll just have to look it up. I like that he says he's not willing to elaborate on that, and that really came back to bite him in the ass, because if you look up Yuri Lowenthal nepotism, the first thing that comes up is a Reddit thread of people just shitting on Pathetic Man over here for having the worst, most incel-like takes ever. So that being said, I want to address the point of Yuri Lowenthal is a bad voice actor, and I'm going to show you why that is not true. I should have known you'd turn on me. Just like all the others. Turn. Turn. I've worshipped you. Your mind. Your conscience. Wanting to help others. The way you never gave up. Whether they understand it or not. No, you're wrong. You are everything I wanted to be. You just threw it away. You do what you think is best, Doc. It's all any of us can. Peter? Even when it hurts like hell. Peter, where are you going? As Peter discovers the location of where Craven's goons are hanging out, having a party, and we get to see yet another huge woke moment. And everyone just thinks this is okay, this is fine. This totally means nothing. Your lying eyes, your pattern recognition, that's just schizo shit. I was seriously disgusted when I saw this, and it doesn't help that most of this mission is yet another walking simulator mission. Once again, more evidence that 
anything that's woke to him we can translate to normal talk as showing a not white guy that's it he is physically disgusted by the fact that a female hunter who by the way we can assume that the hunters are some of the greatest trained fighters and were probably trained on the same levels as each other is able to fight another guy she probably just trains a lot because that's what the hunters do they train and train and train so it's not hard to believe that she can fight this guy and even beat him and it's not disgusting what's disgusting is your unapologetic honest to god bigotry you hate black people you hate gay people you hate trans people you hate women it's so terrifying how you cannot handle the idea that there are people who just aren't straight white people finally next mission we catch up with the lizard and get a real boss fight and my only real complaint with this is something i didn't mention back in the gameplay section but every single boss fight has an insane amount of dialogue during it and look i'm not arguing this on the basis of realism i couldn't care less about that aspect to be honest what i do care about is most of the dialogue is shit or just completely unnecessary once again it feels like this is there to hold Zoomer's attention. The game expects you to suddenly be on top of your game. Let's just say that didn't mix well with my ADHD brain. It was starting to piss me off by this point. But I feel like it is absolutely misplaced here. If you're fighting a boss that requires you to pay attention to what the enemy is doing so you can react accordingly. The talking is just a distraction. People can say I have a skill issue with this game, that's completely fine by me, but I am not lying to you when I tell you that the talking unironically distracted me and made me worse at the game. <laughs> Saw cops. Yes, the cops apparently exist in this game despite their <laughs> extremely reduced presence. Yeah, that's something you'll probably notice. As a response to a common game journalist complaint about Spider-Man helping the police. I know, a fucking superhero helps the police. What a crazy idea, right? Insomniac decide to remove the police from all but just maybe two or three missions in the entire game. And I don't think Spider-Man even ever directly interacts with them. I would like to give you the benefit of the doubt, however, based on the way you act throughout this entire video, I don't think you deserve it. You're too retarded to even understand what that term means. But you'll see on screen right now, there's a whole fucking mission where you rescue some bad guys and the police are in it. And Dr. Connors warns Peter that the Venom symbiote corrupts your mind. And now, of course, since we've been told this in the story, all of a sudden, Peter's transformation into a monster skyrockets from this point forward because we got to rush this shit along. We got two main characters. There's no time to develop one complete plot line. So I can actually agree to an extent. The symbiote storyline with Peter does feel rushed as he only has the symbiote for two or three days. However, he's being, as usual, willfully negligent and dishonest with his community, or he's just too stupid to understand what's happening in the story. The reason the symbiote speeds up its evilness so quickly is because Peter comes into contact and, if I remember correctly, even touches the meteor, which we can assume is sent to Earth by Null. And when we see Venom interacting with the meteor, he also skyrockets from where he is. So this is a non-argument and also isn't even fully a mistake as it affects Venom too. And I actually want to suggest a secondary option if you don't want a more mature, serious route. You could just do what the 90s cartoon did. Believe it or not, in the original comics, the black suit didn't actually corrupt Peter's mind. That was an idea the cartoon came up with first. And let me give you a little bit of a sample of what that sounded like. It's like this. I'm through with not getting what I want. That's funny. I give up too. I give up trying to be a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Miles ends up tracking down Mr. Negative. He's been captured by Kraven. They have a 1v1 boss battle where Miles decides obviously not to kill him, which I think is definitely the wrong move. It's way too boring. It's yet another thing that makes Miles way too similar to Peter, but without any of the character flaws. Committing homicide is not just a character flaw. 
in multiple different stories killing has been the single thing that's led peter down a dark road for example although it's off screen in the amazing spider-man movies peter starts killing after gwen dies and it's also very silly to say that miles is too much like peter because every spider-man lives by the same mantra remember with great power great responsibility you're a lot like your father you really are peter and that's a good thing but your father lived by a philosophy a principle really he believed that that if you could do good things for other people you had a moral obligation to do those things that's what's at stake here not choice responsibility you have a gift you have power and with great power there must also come great responsibility. Now here we have the first major moment of the story that legitimately pissed me off. Despite losing to Craven in a 1v1 fight, Miles is able to defeat Peter with the symbiote suit on. And I just know this is going to be people making excuses for this saying that, well, Miles' bioelectricity abilities are more effective on the symbiote, and he also could ring the bell in the arena. Well, first of all, it's fucking stupid that his electricity is good against everything in this game. Yeah, not a single enemy resists his powers in any way. In fact, most of the time, it's the opposite. And while the bell argument is fine, I still don't think it should have been enough. Miles already feels like a Gary Stu in a bunch of moments throughout this game, but this is truly the moment that solidified his place as the replacement for Peter Parker, because not only does the student surpass the master, but a more powerful version of his master at that. Now, again, I wanted to leave this clip in in its entirety so that you guys would be able to hear all of his criticism. So... I think this is a fairly common complaint, and I'm actually going to try and break it down in a more respectful manner. Miles' bioelectricity powers come from Martin Lee, who also gives Peter his anti-venom powers, and the anti-venom is strong against the regular venom. Now, if the anti-venom is just regular venom, but with Martin Lee's powers, that means it's Martin Lee's powers that are strong against Venom. And if Miles has Martin Lee's powers, that means Miles realistically does have a reason to be stronger than Venom. If you want to be upset that Miles' powers are strong against everything, that's a fair complaint and I'm not going to hold it against you. However, in this case, it logically does make sense. Same thing going with the bell. Also, Miles doesn't defeat Peter like, like Kratos with Freya and Ragnarok. It's not fighting to win, it's fighting for defense. He's trying to fend off Peter Parker. That's all that's going on. And again, it robs Peter Parker of a great character development moment he could have had. It is embarrassing when the 90s cartoon with its over-the-top voice acting handled this better than the $100 million AAA video game. So, with the help of Miles, Peter rips the suit off, and they capture it, and they have a conversation on a nearby rooftop, which is the beginning of Peter's various groveling, apologizing moments that you're gonna get for the rest of the story. None of this was his fault. Venom was manipulating his mind. Peter didn't even choose to put the fucking suit on. Venom latched to him to save him from dying. So remind me how the fuck any of this behavior, any of his actions were his fault when he was being mind controlled. So I'll gladly tell you actually, and I'm sure your response is, oh, I'm sure you will. I will. The symbiote is an allegory, or in layman terms, a metaphor for addiction, whether it be to alcohol or drugs. If you have a dad who's an alcoholic, so addicted to alcohol, and he's drunk one night and he beats his wife and he beats his kid. Does he deserve to be held responsible for those actions? I would hope you say yes, because even if he was under the influence, which they actually use that exact phrase to describe Peter while he was using the symbiote, Miles says, while you were under the influence. So just because the dad was under the influence of alcohol 
doesn't mean the behavior is any more acceptable and they need to own up to what they did and in this situation they need to try and no longer be addicted which means cut back on the alcohol if not entirely cold turkey a lot of the time in real world addictions people need help now you can't stop the person from their addiction you can't rip the needle out of their arm you can't rip the needle out of their hand or the bottle out of their hand or their fridge but you can do what you can to be there for them and try to help them in their time of need because that's what it is it's a time of need it's an incredibly hard moment in someone's life that causes them to spiral into addiction if the symbiote is an allegory for addiction miles help take the bottle out of peter's hands it's not that complex and peter was not mind controlled and in yet another contrived moment venom is born and he is way more powerful than he was being attached to peter which is not explained in any way but i will let it slide because it's a rule of cool moment so this actually is explained the symbiote feeds off of hate you said you read the comics, which means you probably have dabbled in other forms of media, most likely including the spectacular Spider-Man, but you also talked about Ultimate Spider-Man, which introduced Venom in, I believe, also 2009, which means you have a little bit of an idea up to the late 2000s. All that to say, in most other forms of media, other than the original 616 comic line, the symbiote feeds off of hate. Now, Peter has a lot of sadness, which manifests in hate. Harry is livid. As far as he's concerned, his friend is trying to kill him. His best friend, who he's known since, at the latest, high school, is okay with him dying because he wants, just, he wants his own life to be better. So Harry has way more hate in his heart now than Peter does, and that manifests in a bigger symbiote in Venom. The only real problem I have with this entire sequence is that it just makes the entire Craven plotline feel kind of pointless. He existed purely to be a jobber to Venom, to make Venom seem like a real threat, the most powerful thing that Spider-Man has faced so far, because we just got to see how badass Craven was. He easily killed Scorpion. He was able to fight Spider-Man with the symbiote almost to a standstill. He defeated Miles, albeit off screen. But much later, right at the end of the game, Miles Morales is a match for Venom. He fights Venom in single combat and is able to fend him off and Peter gets a plot device power that allows him to fight Venom. There's a real reason. Miles does not. So the power levels are fucked in this game. Okay, I just had to rant about that for a second. That's actually sort of a fair criticism that it makes Craven feel sort of like a jobber. Although he does kill half the Sinister Six, it does, to an extent, feel like he was nothing to Venom, although that's because it was to show just how strong Venom is. I also don't fully agree with that take, however, I can't put into words my opinions because I don't exactly know what they are, so I don't feel comfortable arguing that point. What I do feel comfortable arguing, though, is that Miles shouldn't have been able to beat Venom. Like I said, he has bioelectricity powers, which are from Martin Lee, and Martin Lee is canonically the reason that anyone has the anti-venom whether it be in the comics him giving eddie brock with cancer anti-venom or in this game him giving peter anti-venom it's the same thing that gives miles bioelectricity and if they're all the same thing and those things are leaps and bounds stronger than venom it makes sense why miles is able to fight fist to fist with venom now we get to arguably the worst part of the entire game, the Scream boss battle. Mary Jane gets infected with the symbiote, and she turns into Scream, who actually is a symbiote from the comics, and we get the most blatant, transparent, feminist rant I think I've ever heard in a video game. I'm just gonna play some clips from the boss battle and you could judge for yourself. If this is about your job, it's about me. Hey! It's not my job, but it's stupid house. Typical woman. Me, me, me. Don't listen to those voices. They aren't telling the truth. I heard them too. I know how it feels. Always about you. You can't keep a job. You can't pay the mortgage. Did he do without 
Yeah, cause he was shit. <laughs> I think most of this game was written by a woman. No, it didn't. Shut the fuck up, Peter. You're such a bad liar, really. Your book helped me, MJ. So as usual, this guy just kind of hates the fact that women have problems. This is, in my opinion, one of the most emotional boss fights in the game because a lot of her criticisms a lot of Mary Jane's problems are things that she's hinted at or brought up earlier. And it's a very real situation where a partner feels like they aren't as important as the other partner is. Spider-Man even accidentally says, I always fi we always fix this. He he's used to using I, me, me language, which is really silly when this guy's criticizing, oh, typical women, me, 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 me. And as for it being like unrealistic that her book has helped him i want to show you what is one of if not the best scene in spider-man 2 that goes on to help peter defeat otto octavius you'll never guess who he wants to be <laughs> spider-man why well he knows a hero when he sees one too few characters out there flying around like that saving old girls like me lord knows Kids like Henry need a hero. Courageous, self-sacrificing people. Setting examples for all of us. Everybody loves a hero. People line up for them, cheer them, scream their names, and years later they'll tell how they stood in the rain for hours just to get a glimpse of the one who taught him to hold on a second longer. I believe there's a hero in all of us that keeps us honest, gives us strength, makes us noble, and finally allows us to die with pride, even though sometimes we have to be steady and, and give up the thing we want the most. Even our dreams. Spider-Man did that for Henry, and he wonders where he's gone. He needs him. These are just words, and very few at that, from Aunt May to Peter Parker, while she's alive. Now, MJ wrote a whole book, and Peter is struggling immensely with his mental situation, with the loss of his idol and his mentor and is also dealing with the loss of his mother figure his aunt may so it's not impossible to believe that mj's book did help him just like aunt may's words helped him take down the bad guy at the end of the spider-man 2 film because it wasn't spider-man who defeated otto octavius it was peter parker it was my dream sometimes to do what's right, we have to be steady and give up the thing we want the most, even our dreams. And like I said, these are very real conversations that you have in a relationship, especially a long-term and serious relationship like the one Peter has with MJ. Now, I can't imagine that pathetic man knows much about long-term and or serious relationships, as he doesn't really seem to like women all that much. However, in relationships, it's not uncommon for one of the members to feel like they aren't good enough, or like their partner is just better than them, and they would be even better without them around. So no, this isn't a feminist woke moment, this is a honest to god true understanding of a genuine and serious conversation between two lovers mary jane is obviously the self-insert of the lead writer for this game and this rant must be directed toward her ex-boyfriends or some shit because this is some of the most out of touch narcissistic bullshit i think i've heard in any piece of entertainment 
this is just further proof that this man has never had a deep emotional connection with a member of the opposite sex because you're so retarded if you think that having personal problems in a relationship equals narcissistic me 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 behavior you're allowed to have problems for example this guy right here seems to have problems with minorities existing or minorities having opinions or spider-man helping the every guy but i guess making an hour and a half long video about your issues with a game is acceptable meanwhile having problems in a relationship isn't acceptable i think both are acceptable obviously because i'm making this video but it's such a hypocritical stance to take here it reads like a parody. And before anybody says that, oh, that's the point because she's got a symbiote on her. So that's not really what she thinks. No, the symbiote is enhancing what she already felt. And that's why Peter is constantly fucking apologizing and acting like a bitch the entire time. Fuck you, insomniac. It's unbelievable. I've got nothing more to say, really. So you recognize that the symbiote doesn't mind control you, it just exasperates things you already feel, which that alone kind of dismantles your entire argument of Peter shouldn't be held accountable. So I'm just going to play these two clips side by side and I want to know, which one is the truth, synthetic man? So remind me how the fuck any of this behavior, any of his actions were his fault when he was being mind controlled. It reads like a parody. And before anybody says that, oh, that's the point because she's got a symbiote on her. So that's not really what she thinks. No, the symbiote is enhancing what she already felt. <laughs> But the worst part of this mission comes right at the very end, as despite Peter now having a real reason to contribute, something that makes him stand out from Miles, since Miles is pretty much just him but better, he says this. Why would the city need me when it has you? Now all of you can stop coping, seething, and dilating, claiming that Marvel's not trying to replace Peter Parker since he's a straight white male. Insomniac just straight up told you that Miles should replace Peter because he's better in every way, and he's also an oppressed minority, and he's very cultured. And Peter, at the ripe old age of 26, is busted and slow and useless, despite just being given a power which would justify his existence in this plot. It makes sense that this guy is so racist he can't keep up with the plot. Let me dumb it down for you, buddy. Peter's not saying that Miles can do it because he's a suppressed black male who's cultured and swaggalicious, and I'm a fucking broken down white man at the age of 28. Peter is in the worst position in his life. He's hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt via mortgage via May's house. He is dealing with the trauma of his mentor being a super evil guy he's dealing with the trauma of may's passing and he blames all of that on himself everything is how could i let this happen it's always like that when you're dealing with peter parker so no it's not because miles is black and hip and peter is old and white it's because Peter is not in a good mental space to try and help everyone, and even if, when he was, it constantly demolished his life. So now that there's another Spider-Man who can pick that up, maybe it's time for him to settle down for just a little bit, take a, take a back seat, and get his life back together, because that's what he wants, and honestly, that's what he deserves. But Sony fans are fucking idiots. They'll eat this slop up. They don't care because they hate themselves. They are the soy boy beta male Redditors who hate themselves. <laughs> and we're given an actually interesting ethical dilemma. Dr. Connors tells Peter that he has to kill Harry to stop Venom, whereas Norman Osborn wants him to save his son. Unfortunately, because this is a modern superhero story, Spider-Man doesn't consider killing Harry for even a second, so it's not really a real moral dilemma, but we almost had something interesting there. As usual, 
He's stupid and wrong. It's almost irritating trying to deal with him at this point, but we're close to the end of the video, so let's keep going. Peter Parker doesn't want to kill. It's always going to be the last thing he does. Cletus Cassidy deserves to be killed more than anyone else in Spider-Man's rogues gallery, as far as I'm aware. And Peter doesn't kill Cletus, even when he's not part of the symbiote. Cletus still pushed his fucking grandma down the stairs when he was a kid, and if I'm correct, electrocuted his mom while she was in the shower or bath or one of the two. Point being, he deserves to die, don't you think? Peter hasn't killed him ever in the comics and he was introduced in the 90s when you loved reading comics Ooh, you hear that i said 90s a little little car keys jingling over here for him peter doesn't kill unless he has to kill so no shit he doesn't immediately go okay i'm going to kill heavy he's going to do that as the absolute last of the last resorts four forms you're playing is miles morales because he's there he exists he has to contribute this is clearly peter's moment to fight his best friend that is the dramatic buildup of the story and they still had to have you play as miles morales for the second half of the fight no less now this may or may not surprise you but i actually agree i think miles had little to no place to be in the venom boss fight as there was very little if any emotional connection between those two characters the closest thing i can think of is harry asking to help because he feels useless and his mom telling him that if there are no open doors, make one yourself. So that's what he's trying to do. That's the only time that I feel there's any emotional connection. Other than that, there's nothing. And I agree, this was Peter's fight. And I also agree that if Miles was gonna be in it, he should have gotten the first half, not the second half. And I feel like we really were, in a way, robbed of having what could have been the most emotional boss fight we've seen. And then the end credits scene where it shows Miles' mom is dating some dorky fat Asian guy and his daughter is Cindy Moon, a.k.a. Silk. So we're now going to have three Spider-Men in the next one. Instead of Spider-Gwen, it's going to be Silk. Because it wasn't enough to have a minority Spider-Man, we now also need a woman Spider-Man. In fact, just fucking kill Peter Parker already. I'm tired of this bullshit. This story fucking sucks. This kind of just proves the points I've been making even more. He hates women. How dare they have a female Spider-Man? And that's the reason. Not because it's stupid to have a third Spider-Man, which I agree, we don't need Silk. That's stupid as fuck. But it's not because we don't need a third Spider-Man. No, 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 no. It's because she's a woman. And women bad. And once again, he feels the need to bring up Mr. Moon's ethnicity. What is going on? This guy sees anyone that's not a straight white male and he's like, oh, 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 mm, mm, uh, uh, I can't fucking do it. All right, here we go. Miles Snow, choose life. <laughs> not bad, not bad. Okay. That's more fun than I've had in the last several hours playing this game. <laughs> And with that, we have finally finished the worst Spider-Man video game review I have ever had the displeasure of viewing. I'm shocked if you've made it this far, but I wouldn't blame you if you didn't, due to the fact that this has been incomprehensibly terrible. All of his reviews are negative, calling Tears of the Kingdom garbage, calling Ragnarok garbage, calling Spider-Man 2 garbage, calling Starfield garbage. I just have to ask, if you hate games so much, why do you play them? It doesn't make sense. And it's not like he just plays the story, he did play some of the side missions. So we can't make the argument of, oh, well he's doing it uh, just for the experience of the story, because that's not true. Maybe he's doing it for money and hey, I won't knock it, but it's very disingenuous to call all these games horrible, 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 woke, disgusting, garbage, oh my god, pandering to the left, oh my god, the left are destroying America, you're in bed with Hunter Biden and other children, oh my goodness, communist China, yada, 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 but then still buy the next game. 
This is like the average Call of Duty player. Oh my god, bro. MW2 is so ass, bro. This game is garbage. But next year, next year comes around and it's the same thing again. You're not getting a good game, so stop playing it. But the issue here is you are getting good games. Ragnarok, amazing game. I imagine he'd call Detroit Become Human woke garbage because it's very clearly got themes of racism. So he probably fucking hates that game, which that game is an amazing game. Another 9 out of 10. He hates Ragnarok. He hates Spider-Man 2. He hates Tears of the Kingdom, which I haven't had the pleasure of playing. However, according to those who I've heard play it, it's a great game. So why buy games if you fucking hate them? You don't like video games. Like you can say you do as much as you want, but all of the videos show that you don't like games unless they are just white straight males which is insane also now that we've finished i think i can comfortably say that while i try not to accuse people of certain things because that's not really who i am at the end of the day this guy is a bigot he is transphobic he is racist he is sexist he's all of the isms he just loves white guys oh my like he would i'm so confident that if he could he would get on his knees and give sloppy toppy to a white guy who appears in a video game because he loves white people just that much with all that being said i appreciate you for getting through this video thank you so so much i hope you enjoyed if you did please make sure to like comment and or subscribe they boost engagement with the channel so much and it helps get the video out to more people if you have any comments to make any disagreements leave them in the comments i'll make sure to read every single one of them and that's about it see ya